Hi guys, so today I have uh, several items from Spellbinder's new Serenade of Autumn collection to share with you guys. Um, these items were sent free of charge from my review and of course all opinions are my own and any links I have in the description box will be affiliate links which means I'll make a small commission if you're purchased items through those links. So thanks for using those if you would like. I do want to mention since I am filming this kind of contemporarily, I guess is the word I'm looking for, um, Spellbinder's just launched a sale and I believe, let me just make sure, it is... 25 off of an order of 150 or more on the US site and I'm sure they have something comparable on the um, the uh, UK site so I will have that info there as far as how long that sale goes and basically that just comes off automatically off your cart and if you're already a club member you do get your 10% off and then you'll get the 25 off of 150 once it's 150 I suppose after the discount right so uh, again that's automatic as soon as you add that much um, that amount of product I guess in your cart so uh, yeah this one has a lot in it the Serenade of Autumn collection lots of stamps um, some better press plates I don't have any of those to share with you guys today but I do have some of the other items um, dyes um, there is a glitter mix that um, was part of the collection I don't believe if you click on the collection like I usually put the whole collection name down in the description you can click on it it'll take you right to there um, this is not in that selection but I assume they put it in it like it's supposed to be part of the collection even though it doesn't come up on that group because the colors are very similar to what's going on here so this is one of their new glitter mixes or shaker mixes it's um, spring butterfly is actually what it's called so which is interesting because it's autumn but the colors I mean are just like spot on so I guess I'll start with that one I love the little um, case that this is in you have like um, iridescent butterflies there's some very light blue like like a matte sequence that blue really really pretty sequins I guess I said sequins did I um, some yellow and like peachy and again with that matte kind of sheen even though it's metallic I love it um, really really pretty I see some iridescent hearts some small iridescent um, kind of peachy or coral looking sequins so there's a lot going on you know as you're discovering what's in there really really pretty so that is again part of the collection really really gorgeous that. That uh, son was calling and it came up on my <laughs> laptop here um, okay um, a wax seal stamp called sunflower again very sunflowery I guess I didn't mention that off the top but um, tons of images of sunflowers and just really gorgeous so this is a one inch uh, wax seal and again part of the new collection there Serenade of Autumn uh, butterflies these are gorgeous I do see that they are still in stock I know the paper is not in stock right now at least not on Spellbinders excuse me but I will try and see if it's available uh, elsewhere and link those so um, Serenade of Autumn butterflies and look how pretty they are again just like the corally kind of pinky peaches I love the translucent the darker blue kind of like a like a Tiffany blue I would say the green is just such gorgeous colors so these guys are always super popular oh I do have these the Serenade of Autumn gems which are gorgeous really fun I love the different size these are chunkier even the small one is you know you can see hopefully kind of by the size of my nail um, a good size right and then the medium size and the larger and like again that kind of peachy kind of more coral that uh, very sagey green and that beautiful kind of dusty blue um, let's check out these guys oh they also have I think um, resist papers that are like watercolor resist papers you know so where you don't see the print until you add some kind of color to it so they have those this is the Serenade of Autumn vellum with foil I mean this is so pretty I think these are six inch sheets yes yeah, six sheets three designs um, so there's two of each so you have two of that gorgeous kind of mandala it's a sunflower kind of look and this one very more like poppies how pretty is that again two sheets of those and then this one just has your fall leaves on there really really gorgeous um, I'll go with the papers last since um, We'll just go there last <laughs> so again I said they do they do have several different stamp sets this is one of them I love the script really just to make some fun kind of backgrounds you have like little splotches sending seeds of happiness and love thankful for your friendship embrace the day I'm truly grateful for everything you do the beautiful sunflower these definitely will coordinate with um, the sunflowers for Ukraine if you ever picked up any of those uh, stamps I believe they were all stamps I don't remember if there were dyes um, in support of Ukraine so um, you know you can bring those in and it'll be really lovely again photopolymer stamps there we have this um, embossing folder it's a 3d embossing folder and again I have samples guys so some of my things aren't packaged the way you would receive them and some are um, 
so cute. So I love that it has this circle. I mean, if you want to pop maybe one of the sunflowers, like, um, and I'll show you in just a minute some of the dyes right in the center there. That'd be really cute. Or just showcase your stamped, you know, sentiment there. And then you have that beautiful embossing all around. Lots of fun ways to play with that. So you have that circle there and then all kinds of like fall leaves all around. Again, these guys are five and three quarters by eight and three quarters and they'll uh, emboss an image that's about five and a half by eight and a half, right? So lots of beautiful space on that and then they have a stencil you guys so this stencil um, it says layered sunflower stencil as you can see it's eight and a half by eleven but it's going to make a couple different uh, like this <laughs> what I was gonna say it's like um, each little section I don't know if you can see this has its own thing going with this one and then this one and then you keep going that way um, really gorgeous I'm wondering today I was planning on using the dies but maybe we'll do this one something you know We'll see. I, I love stencils, so I really want to get to trying that out. Okay, so we have those guys. And then I'll go through the paper pack, and then we'll go through the dies again. My dies are just like in a little bag here, but we'll show you those. They do have some wax seal dies. Um, you know what I'm saying? The little sprigs, which of course you don't have to use the wax seals on. Um, you can use anything. You can use them for anything. They're really cute. So Saturday of Autumn paper, like I said, it's sold out currently on Spellbinders, but hopefully they'll have some back, or you can find it like maybe at scrapbook.com or scrapbook palette one of the other sites um gorgeous i love the colorway of this whole i mean collection is just really pretty with that gold um foil on there and there's two of each i guess i could read the cover what does it say <laughs> 20 sheets 10 designs so 10 designs two of each um beautiful leaves and look at the pumpkins just really lovely again this is um layering weight paper you know Heavier than printer paper, but obviously not as heavy as cardstock. Really gorgeous kind of display there of the pumpkins. Look at this one. Oh, that is so pretty. I love that blue. <gasps> you know, we had work done here at the house, and we go with like brighter, like teal kind of blues. That is pretty for a wall, I and mean, even as wallpaper. Look at that, it's gorgeous. But anyway, <laughs> that's what that got me thinking. I'm like, oh, that would have been pretty. Um, love the little butterflies going up the edge here and then we have some script again going back to like the stamps like i said there are several stamp sets in the collection i have the one but there are plenty of them um beautiful background and that gold foiling of the little like sprigs really pretty sunflowers here super cute um gorgeous papers look like stressed really fun and then this one we have, uh, again, more of that circular feel with the um, leaves. I love how some of them are kind of like white out, but they have a gold um, edging, really artsy and beautiful. And then that gorgeous blue again. That is such a pretty color with the gold um, foiling of the sunflowers. Really nice and bold. Okay, so we have some different sprigs, and let me get the names for these guys. Um, so we do have the main sunflower, which is this one here, the Sunflower Serenade. Uh, from Serenade of Autumn. So this one's called Sunflower Serenade. This one, it has a larger sunflower, the centers and those kinds of things. So what you're gonna do with this dye is you cut it out a couple times or maybe three times and you kind of layer them, right? You kind of turn them so that it looks really full. And then you have a stem if you would like. You have some beautiful leaves that are turning in different ways. So you can put them on your little stick here, your little stem, if you want that. You have a center plus a center that has like, um, some detail to it so you would layer those up super simple going to make it a really beautiful um, sunflower for you I'll give you the size of the largest die so you have an idea it's like well the die itself is like two and a quarter and you know just over, oopsie, just over two inches for the um, the flower itself of course when you're layering it's gonna be like two and an eighth or so um, we have the sprigs I was mentioning the autumn sealed sprigs check these guys out these are gorgeous nice and long sprigs here so one two three four five they're like five and a half inches right tall really really nice and tall so you have like what looks like kind of like wheat maybe grass however you want to use those a little maple leaf oak <laughs> some kind of leaf <laughs> if it's not a super basic tree, I don't really know. And then we have um, the little leaves here, and then we have stems here. So we can see those guys. Again, that's a different set. Um, smaller sprigs, you can intersperse here and there. You have this beautiful flower. 
oh, I love these kinds of flowers. They look like these really cool, like, kind of, I always say bells, but I don't know if these are the kind that when they dry and you shake them, you can hear something, maybe, but that's what it has. And then it has the little decorative piece for that. And then the center for your flowers over here, if you might make them just like flower flowers, sunflowers. The examples for a lot of these are just so pretty, you guys. Hopefully you check them out, um, especially the ones I saw for like this guy here on the, um, on the site because they're obviously have been available since the 10th. Um, just really, really awesome examples. And then I have Serenade Sentiments. Like I said, they do have better press strips, which are really nice. I do not have them here to show you, but they do have that available too if you like the better press um, and you know what that does for you. Um, you know what? I should have put these guys out. Sorry. So I'm just going to look here. It has the words best thank wishes for you. Happy, grateful, birthday, and thankful. So lots of words. Of course, we have the backgrounds and the beautiful sentiment. Look at that one paired up on its own. Thankful. Um, beautiful, I'm assuming, no, no, that one's grateful, goes there. So, um, those are the words that I just read off to you, and if I can pair them up, I will, but I don't want to waste your time either, but there's birthday, and for you is on one piece, so that's pretty cool, where is it? Oh, you know what, the, the wording's probably separate, so here's four, and then you... But the background piece for it is one piece, is what I saw on the site there. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm just trying to see if I can find it. But anyway, um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is gather my thoughts a little bit. There is a lot going on here, and like I said, maybe we'll do the stenciling today. May pair it up with some other items, but I'll be right back. Oh, you know, before I go too far, um, actually the U is here, you can see that. So it's paired together on the side, but it's not actually one die. So, okay, so there's they are separate dies. No wonder. I was like, I don't see one that looks long enough to do the four in U. But, okay, there you go. All right, I will be right back. So I kept the word thankful out, because I think we'll use that with our stenciling here. So I just have a piece of paper. It's roughly four and a quarter by five and a half, but it's not cut nicely or anything yet. Uh, I just took it off of another piece of paper, you know, piece of cardstock that I already cut into. Um, so what I'm going to do is I want to know about how big this image is. So you see how I was barely at the edge there. So maybe I'm going to turn it this way. Um, and I'm almost thinking I should start with the greenery. It does have registration marks, but they're very close to the image and I don't want to, um, really get those involved <laughs> so uh, with the size of my paper you know so I'm going to kind of center this just knowing where that greenery is really because it is the larger pieces here I'm going to try and center that like I said and to stick this down and start working maybe what we can do is also tape there's like little registration marks here that I don't want to end up showing through so I'm going to tape over that registration mark guys and over here too Okay, just in case I want to make this as big as I want, or maybe a little bit smaller, I don't know. Um, and then I'm just going to take some color. So I chose a deeper orange, kind of bright, and like a deeper yellow, but I'm going to start with the greenery, just so we kind of have an idea of where we're at. So I'm going to go in here. I believe this is all greenery. Again, you do have images here that you can see that that's pretty much all greenery. So I'm going to be careful when I get here, because I don't want to... This, um, again, whenever I do stenciling, you're starting, generally the layers are lighter colors to darker. So this is an olive green, which is usually a pretty deep color, but I'll finish off with a deeper, like, brown or just something else. And I try to be careful, because the other day I was doing some stenciling and I got ink on my project somehow. All right, so there's that. And that will help me have a better idea of how big this is, but also where to put everything. So that's good. Okay. Ah, so we have this guy and then this guy, and I guess I'm going to keep it turned to the side because that works out better here. Let me get my tape. And usually I rinse off my stencils pretty quickly. Um, the only thing is that uh, if I wet this, I'm going to have to really dry it before I move on and I don't want to do that right now. So I'm just... What I'm doing since I don't have registration marks is I'm looking at the image and what that kind of looks like as far as where it should possibly be placed. Maybe there. Well, that looks really good. Okay. 
So that's good there, but not so much over here. So let me keep turning. Now I'm lining up the second one. That looks really good. Okay, so this is the first flower one. Let me bring it down a little bit this way. That looks great. Um, I don't think I'll get into any of these other registration marks so much, so I'm just going to tape it down. Again, lighter to darker, so I'm going to go with the lighter, the yellow, and then the next layer I'll do the orange. So we have yellow here. Those are just the colors I'm choosing to work with. Very traditional, but you can, you know, there's all kinds of sunflowers and all kinds of different colors nowadays. Alright, so that's the yellow. I was thinking about cutting with this a die with this with a die anyway, my image, because I want to use maybe the embossing folder also. And um, so we'll see. Um, okay, so again now I'm pretty much putting these lines over what we just did because that's clearly you want that covered. So it's a little easier to find your spot um, this time around. And right there, again, just because I'm not using the registration marks. That looks really good. So does that. Okay, I think right here is a good spot for this. And I don't know. Right there. So let's put this away. And grab the deeper kind of orange color that I have here. We do have some stencil area here that you want to be mindful of, but you're pretty much in the center right now, but I don't want to get like my inky fingers through there. So let's go here. Oh, that's so pretty. And see, I kind of center in the, start in the center and go out, and it just gives a nice look. Okay. I haven't planned out much further than these guys, so let's <laughs> take this guy up and off of here. Look how pretty that is. Oh my gosh. Got a little schmutz there. Okay. Um... So now we're going to start working with the other side of the stencil here, and again, I'm, I'm kind of doing it sideways, so now when we get over here, you can see that's the smaller and the larger flower. Uh, let me see the detail on here. So you're going to have that bit of detail, and then you're going to have the centers with a little bit of detail on the greenery, and then the dark center part. So with this one, um, let's see, let me place that down real quick and see what it is that I want to... Oh, there we go. That looks good. I can see that that's pretty well placed. Um, maybe like a brownish color. Ooh, or gold. Gold might be nice. I don't know if it's going to show up too well. Let's go for it. I'm still going to use... Well, actually, no, I'm not. <laughs> That's a pigment ink and it really wants to stick, so let me grab my finger daubers. And I'll just choose a new one because I don't think I've done this before. Oh, gold. And I'm just going to take the gold. Now, this stuff, pigment ink, does take a while to set up. And so, um, if you wanted to set it, heat set it, you can think of that. Ooh, or bring in some glitter. That always looks nice. Like, um,. For your centers or for these accent pieces. So I'm just going to go through and do this. It's going to take a little minute because that's just what happens with this stuff. And it might look a little dirty because I've noticed that's what happens with these kinds of inks, especially in a gold color. But let's just do that just for a little hint of something. I'm really trying to rub those in there. Okay. Let's see what we got. That's that one has. It's pretty. And again, like I said, it gives it. I don't stencil a lot with pigment inks, the metallic ones, because it just seems that it kind of just isn't as shiny as you would think it would be. Okay, but it's a nice accent. So there we go. Um, oh, let's put that over there. Okay, next step the way I'm doing it we have these guys so again it's the flower center plus some greenery accents on the greenery so let's place this maybe there that looks good maybe over here and the 
the greenery looks pretty good. Let me see. It's a little bit off the leaves. There we go. I'm trying to center here, but also pay attention to the leaves and where the greenery accents might go. That looks good. Here, okay. Um, let me pick a couple of colors for that and I'll be right back. Okay. So for my flower centers, I have, actually I'll probably use both of these. So I have the light brown and I have the dark brown for the very, very center. But right now we'll start with the light brown. And there is some greenery that can get in there. So I'm just gonna be careful with how I get into that spot. I'm not too worried about that kind of splotch there. Okay, and then the greenery, let me grab one of these guys. It's a little smaller. And I'm gonna do this evergreen. It's just like a darker green. Oops, I feel like that's gonna be, okay. And I'm just gonna go into the areas where we have lines for the greenery. And this one's a little, you know, that's kind of all over. So I'm going to do this with you guys just for a little bit. There even are some down in here. So wherever I see the little lines, I'm just going to go in. Okay, I'll be back. All the areas. And, you know, I was telling you guys, oh, be careful here. And what did I do? What did I do? Yeah, I got it right in there. <laughs> got a little green in the brown spot, but that's okay. All right. And look how pretty. Hopefully we can take care of that in the next one. And then we have this guy, which I suppose I need to go this way. And that might be out of frame, guys. I'm sorry. What I'm going to do is just layer this on here in the center, obviously. Paying attention to where those little dots are going to be. Right there. Tape that down a little bit. And then I'm just going to go in with the darker brown that I have here. And just color that in, okay? Sorry. I'll be right back. Move this in a way that maybe you'll see. Okay, that's it. And that is that, guys. I mean, look how gorgeous that is. Beautiful colors. I love the way that came together. Um, and you can use it this way. You can use it this way. I feel like it's this way. Um, so let me look at some dyes and what I might want to do for the background, and I'll be right back. So super gorgeous. I'm thinking let's go oval. Although it does kind of have a square shape. It does kind of have a rectangular shape. If you want to do something like that, it'd be great. But I did grab this set of ovals, my fluted ovals. And it looks like this one would be best suited if I was going to cut it out. Again, you can leave the whole thing and just, you know, put your thankful on there. It'd be really lovely. Obviously you want a nice straight edge. But I think what I'm going to do is just place it like this and run that through. Um, Really, really pretty. I mean, oh my gosh. Okay, I think right there is good. And then I have this beautiful metallic orange paper that I think I'm going to try out. So what I'm going to do is cut this down to four and eighths by five and three eighths, and then I'm going to run it through the um, the embossing folder. Okay, so I will be right back. Guys, before I do that, I was going to actually add a little something. Now it looks really clean and beautiful and I love that kind of thing, but you can also get a little artsy. So let's just do a little something with this guy. I was going to grab these letters. Sorry, I totally forgot about that. And I do want to try it out. So we have this guy and just something brown, even a very light brown would be good. I'm going to take obviously this off because I need to get back to this. <laughs> And let me put down a little something here so I can do this work. Okay, you can go for that clean look of just what it is, but I thought it'd be really pretty if we came in with some of this. And it looks like it has a direction. It says like something, hands, I don't know, it looks like it goes this way. So I'm going to ink this up. And you can even stamp a little bit of it off so that when you go to do this, it's just lighter, you know, instead of just being so dark and like brazen. So let's just do that. Maybe a little bit over here. You know, we're going to trim a lot of this away. So maybe in there and like here. Just some wording back there. Oh, I love that. I feel like it needs a little bit more at the top. So again, stamp it, stamp some off, and then just like up in there. Yeah. Okay. 
Now, let's go for it. That's pretty. And it's all over there, and we have this here. I love it. Okay. Let's go there. Okay. All right, guys. I'll run it through now. So, you know, I was aiming for an A2 size card, so that is four and a quarter by five and a half. If you're making your own card base, you want a piece of paper that is eight and a half by five and a half, and you score it at four and a quarter. And I always t say that in literally every video, but you never know what journey someone is on in their card making or paper crafting. So, um, hope that information helps. Okay, so look at that. Oh my gosh. <gasps> so pretty. I can see it got a little wonky over here because probably just the way the design hit that area. So I'm going to try to straighten that out. And then we will just glue that down. It's this area, right? So let's go back. And again, I'm eyeballing this too, so it could have just been I cut it wonky to begin with. <laughs> right? So five and three eighths. Just that little bit of wonkiness there. Okay. Very good. And what I'm going to do is just glue this guy down. Oh, you can also see that this is what it looks like. Cause obviously, that's that beautiful orange. But if you just want to see the deboss side, it looks like that. Um, let's go ahead and glue this guy down. And then we'll check out our oval that we cut ourselves. Now, a little bit tricky because you don't want to put too much glue. I'm going to put it right in the center of this kind of paper because what happens is it can start warping. It depends on how wet your glue is and I know that sounds silly but like some glues have more water content than others. This guy's already sticking down real well for me. Um, this guy. It's just gonna pop up right here. So I think, or maybe not, it depends on my words. So we have that guy and then I have thankful. I don't know if I was going to use the background piece for the thankful. I was thinking about just using this portion. So I might just stick it down just to make it easier to stick this down too. I'm going to run this through maybe some gold paper and I'll be right back. So let's go ahead and bring this guy back over and I guess I could have just stuck that down. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Alright. Let's go ahead and just stick that guy down. I love that just a little bit of lettering in the background. I know maybe I didn't show it to you guys quite well enough. There you go. Um, that looks really good. I feel like I need to flatten that out. But we have our thankful here. So pretty. The better press plates for this are really gorgeous too. They have a nice um, cut to them. They're the kind where you run it through and you have all the words and you run it through again with the die and it cuts it out. And then the die has like um. Like, it's like an inverted dovetail, so it kind of goes out like this on the ends. Really cute. I'm trying to see if I need to make this a little sturdier with like another... Sorry. Um, yeah, you know, I'll run it through one more time um, from some white paper just to make it a little sturdier, and then I will be right back. Um, cuts so nicely. Really, really nice and crisp. Love the font on that. All right, now let's pop these little bits out. And basically, I'm just going to put glue on the back side of this other one. Oh, it's a little guy. Hold on. Oh, and you know what? I was thinking about possibly using vellum for the back of my words. So you can definitely take like this guy and run it through something like this, and you'd have that, and then you can put your thankful on it, and it just has a pretty design. Actually, maybe we'll do that. I'm going to take this little guy, just run it through, and I'll be right back. So we're just using quite a bit of the collection today. All right, so let me show you what I was thinking. You have that, and then have it in the background. And, you know, just glue it down, then you have that um, heft from that. But since I ran this one through, I'm going to go ahead and stick this one on too. So I'm just going to put glue nicely in the back of my hand. Dab, dab, dab. And layer these two guys together. They're a little bit delicate, so I'm going to start with the T over here. And just pay attention to that. That's layered nicely before I move on 
to the rest of my letters. That looks good. And once you get to a certain point, it really just kind of layers in really nicely. That looks great. This one needs a little help. Okay, and I still have glue on the back of my hand, so what I think I'll do is I'll just dab, dab, dab. <laughs> And layer this onto here. Again, starting with that T. Oh, come on, buddy. There we go. I'm still holding that down under my thumb, and then I'll kind of arrange the H going into the A. And see, the K needs a little help. This way. There we go. Okay, and then I'll hold that down and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just kept that under something a little bit heavy just to get that really nice and flat and stuck down. Looks really great. And you know, I mean, we can put it right in the center. I generally like doing things like this. <laughs> Maybe just like right in here. Hmm. Off the top. No. No. Yeah, just like right down there. All right. So, obviously with vellum you can kind of see through it. So I'm just going to put glue as I can kind of behind the lettering. Hide it a little bit. Just put that right in here. Looks pretty. And then I think what I'm going to do is pick out some sequins maybe from this set. Like the pinky corally colors. Let me see. I know there were some in here that were smaller than others. Looking for those guys. Oh, they're there. Like this guy. Oh, maybe I didn't get him. But either way, there's some small guys in here. There he is. So maybe... You know, like doing everything in groups of three. So there are some smaller ones here. Like this one is two of them stuck together, so I will take them apart. And I can use either one. One there. One here, and one of the larger ones. There, and I'll do the same thing over here. Large one, small, two small ones. Okay guys, so there is our card. <laughs> Lots going on, really beautiful. I love that stenciling. That background looks awesome. You know, you have your wording here and some of the little uh, sequins from the kit there. So thanks for watching, guys, and then a little bit of the stamping in the background, right? Thank you so much, Spellbinders, for these items for review. I'm telling you, this is a really extensive collection. It's gorgeous. Again, I'll have more info on the sale of the automatic uh, 25 off of a cart of 150 in the description box. And I will see you all at the next one. Bye now.